uh, welcome to this module. Uh, here what we are discussing uh, in the last lecture we have seen uh, a biochip MEMS based biochip that we can use to understand the tissue property or learn the uh, changes in the tissue property. What are the changes? Electrical changes, thermal changes, mechanical changes, three changes right. So, uh, when you talk about thermal changes you need to fabricate a micro heater and for that we have seen in the last module how to fabricate the micro heater using MEMS based process right. So, if you see on the slide uh, this is what we have seen yesterday several micro heaters that you can uh, fabricate on the oxidized silicon wafer. Now, today if you see uh, over the heater there is an interdigitated electrodes right and over interdigitated electrodes there is piezoresistive material. So, we will see today how can we fabricate interdigital <coughs> sorry <coughs> interdigital electrodes on the micro heater and then over interdigital electrodes uh, piezo resistive sensing material which are shown in the four squares here and this one ok. So, I will show you in terms of process flow. So, we should start from a wafer and the wafer is oxidized silicon wafer and on oxidized silicon wafer you have a micro heater right. So, you have nichrome you have SiO2, you have silicon, you have SiO2. This is your micro heater over oxidized silicon substrate. The next step here would be to deposit or to grow a silicon dioxide or an insulating layer an insulating layer on the micro heater so the the dotted version is the silicon dioxide insulator can be silicon nitride as well right but we are growing silicon dioxide this is your nichrome this is your silicon dioxide this is silicon dioxide and this is your silicon. Now, we have to understand if I go into the back uh, uh, in the, in the previous slide there is a contact here and here which is this one sorry if uh, because this is a chip here and here these are the contacts which are this context ok. So, I have to keep it open for accessing the heater right at the end when the biochip is ready. So, for that I have to remove or etch the silicon dioxide from the contact region. To do that the next step would be after this the next step would be to spin coat photoregist. this is my positive photoregist. After spin coating photoregist I will go for soft bake at 90 degree centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate. Next step is to load the mask to load the mask. So, I would have my nichrome, I will have photoresist and a mask, photoresist silicon dioxide over micro heater and this is my mask. I will use a dark field mask 
this is a positive photo resist silicon dioxide nichrome heater silicon dioxide silicon dioxide silicon dark field mask right so what we have done we have used a dark field mask we have used a positive photo resist and then we will expose this mask with UV light. What will happen? Since it is a positive photo resist, the unexposed region will be stronger and the exposed region would be weaker, correct. So, in this case, the exposed region is this 2. So, after this, if I continue, then what will I do? I will develop the wafer. I will use photo resist developer to develop the photo resist. I can say developing wafer or developing photo resist and then I will get silicon dioxide. my heater, silicon dioxide and photo resist in this area right. Photo resist is shown by the wavy design. So, I have now photo resist silicon dioxide, nichrome heater, silicon dioxide, silicon, silicon dioxide correct. After that I will dip this wafer in buffer, buffer hydro, hydrofluoric acid, but just dipping the wafer in buffer hydrofluoric acid before that we have to do post bake right soft soft bake I will say hard bake. So, before hydrofluoric acid we will go for hard bake, hard bake you know the temperature 120 degree centigrade 1 minute on hot plate right. After that after this step I will go for BHF, BHF is buffer hydrofluoric acid. When we do BHF when we place this wafer in BHF what will happen the silicon dioxide over the contact will get H. Hmm? The silicon dioxide over the contact region will get H like this. Now, you can see the contact correct. After this the next step would be after BHF the next step would be to strip off the photo resist strip of the photo resist that can be done by placing the wafer in acetone that can be done by placing the wafer in acetone. So, if I place the wafer or dip the wafer in acetone then what will I have? I will have my contacts of the micro heater opened and remaining area of the micro heater covered by silicon dioxide right easy. So, this is what we get once we process, once we do the uh, microfabrication process that is we have a micro heater, we grow a silicon dioxide. Now, how we will grow silicon dioxide? There are many techniques right. We will go for plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition uh, or that is why we are depositing silicon dioxide uh, using chemical uh, technique and uh, the advantage is that now we can go for a lower temperature compared to uh, LPCVD. So, uh, why we can use PECVD and what is the importance we will talk uh, during uh, this fabrication uh, uh, class, 
but right now just uh, understand that we have uh, deposited a silicon dioxide layer over nichrome which is a micro heater uh, using PCVD and then we perform photolithography which is you have to spin coat the photoresist. here we have used positive photoresist. then go for a soft bake which is a 90 degree 1 minute hot plate and then we load the mask. The mask is a dark filled mask because we have to open the contact area right then we expose the mask uh, or expose the wafer with UV and the uh, unwanted area or unprotected area uh, or you can say uh, uh, this is a dark filled mask. So, the uh, unexposed area uh, will be stronger and the exposed area would be weaker because we are using positive photoresist. When we do that what we will get? We will get the photoresist uh, uh, over all the uh, area on the sub on the heater except on the context. Then what we can do? Then we can do a hard bake. Hard bake is done at 120 degrees centigrade for 1 minute or hot plate followed by uh, BHF etching the silicon dioxide etching and then finally, we strip off the photoresist with the help of acetone to get the heater over which silicon dioxide is there and the contacts are accessible because there is no silicon dioxide on the contact of the heater right. So, this is the next step. Now, over this we have to develop the interdigitated electrode. So, if you go back if you see the slide I uh, will show you this one right. So, now what we have done on this heater you have silicon dioxide all the way you have silicon dioxide except on the contact region right only in the contact area only in the contact area you do not have silicon dioxide all right. So, after this we need to we need to go for fabricating interdigitated electrodes all right so that we can we can have piezo resistive material patterned on this interdigitated electrodes so let us see the next step fabricating interdigitated electrode on micro heater in between there is an insulating layer okay so we'll start with this wafer and let us see what you have. So, when I do stripping of photo resist uh, in acetone what will I have? I will have this particular wafer right. So, if I want to fabricate an interdigital electrode let us take the wafer there is a oxide there, there is a micro heater and there is an insulating layer right which is your silicon dioxide on the micro heater except except on the contact area then the next step would be the next step would be to deposit metal on the micro heater and this metal is our chrome gold. The reason of using chrome before we uh, deposit gold for is for improving the addition. This is my silicon dioxide this is my micro heater this is again silicon dioxide this is silicon and silicon dioxide cool. Now, next step would be on this you have to spin coat photoresist. So, I will spin coat photoresist on this all right. this is my positive photoresist let it down positive photoresist all right then i'll go for soft bake soft bake is done at 90 degree centigrade for 1 minute on hot plate okay 
after that what is the next step? The next step is that we will go for loading the mask right. So, I have to load the mask this is oxide silicon oxide and then we have heater and then we have silicon dioxide right on that what we have on that we have chrome gold right on chrome gold what we have on chrome gold we have a photo resist on photo resist we will have a mask okay and this mask is a bright field mask to form interdigital electrodes and also sorry and also to protect the metal on the contact of micro heater. So, this is a bright field mask this is to protect the metal on the contact of the micro heater which is right over here and here as well as to, to form the interdigital electrodes. This is my bright field mask this is photoregist positive this is chrome gold then silicon dioxide right then like chrome then silicon dioxide then silicon finally silicon dioxide after this what is the next step all of you know right uv exposure UV exposure. When we expose the UV and develop the wafer, what will happen? The area that is unexposed will become stronger since it is a positive photoresist, and the area which is exposed will become weaker, right? So, if I after this, if I dip the wafer, if I dip the wafer in PR developer, then what will happen? I will see my photo resist my photo resist in this area hmm? correct then after PR developer we will go for chrome and gold etching right if i so if i go for chrome and gold etching after pr developer is it correct step no right because before that we have to go for hard bake hard bake 120 1 minute hot plate after this you can go for chrome gold etching right so when you go for chrome gold etching what you will have you will have right chrome and gold will be saved or protected where there is a photo resist where there was no photo resist the chrome and gold got etched after this what is the next step next step is acetone stripping or acetone strip acetone strip is or acetone using acetone we can strip the with using acetone we can strip the photo resist so if i dip the wafer this wafer into an acetone then my photo resist will get stripped off and what will i have i'll have uh, oxidized silicon wafer vita heater and interdigitated electrodes you got it so i'll repeat the step first you have a wafer with micro heater 
and on that you are protecting the silicon dioxide in all the regions except the contact region. Then you are depositing chrome gold. How can you deposit chrome gold? Using one of the technique PECVD sorry uh, <coughs> PVD physical vapor deposition. Either you can use thermal evaporation or you can use EBM evaporation or you can use sputtering. We have chrome gold and then on chrome gold we spin coat positive photo resist then we do soft bake for 90 degrees centigrade 1 minute on hot plate followed by uh, loading of uh, mask right and then exposing our mask uh, was bright field mask right and uh, we are protecting the uh, region uh, where we want to fabricate the interdigital electrodes and also the contact over the micro heater and then we are exposing the wafer uh, with the help of a, uh, pause with the help of bright film mask followed by a PR develop followed by hard bake at 120 degrees centigrade followed by chrome gold etching because PR will be developed in the area that was exposed and the unexposed region will be uh, hard. Uh, then once you do chrome gold etching you will see that chrome and gold are etched from the region which are not protected by photoresist and then we go for uh, acetone strip uh, or for stripping the photoresist and that will give us an interdigital electrodes over a micro heater and in between there is a insul there is a insulating layer this is a fabrication and this is the actual sem image of the uh, of the interdigital electrodes over silicon dioxide over micro heater you can clearly see a micro heater below interdigital electrodes and in between there is a sandwich layer of silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide being a transfer material uh, 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 you can see the micro heater uh, through the silicon dioxide alright. So, in the next module what we will see we will see how can we deposit a piezo resistive material on this interdigital electrode to fabricate a piezo resistive sensor. So, I hope in this module you will learn quickly how to deposit an insulating layer on micro heater, how to open the contact and then how to fabricate an interdigital digital electrodes uh, over the insulator over micro heater. Uh, just go through it once again and I will see you in the next class where we will do more of this particular step to fabricate a chip that is that can uh, that has an integrated heater an integrated piezo resistive sensors and an integrated electrical sensors right till then you take care i'll see you in next class